Welcome back to the channel. In the last few days, the news has been full of bizarre, rather frustrating and some downright ridiculous stories. So I thought I'd talk about one or two of those in this video, beginning with Sainsbury's that's come under fire for quite a ridiculous advert, suggesting that people should be going out strolling in the park and after dark. So if I take you to this advert here, it shows somebody buying clothing described as a midi dress for £24. Now you could read this either way, it's got that sort of phenomenon when the wording is set out in a particular way, it could be read one of two ways. Either way makes sense in one sense and is also ridiculous in both. For walks in the park or strolls after dark. Or you could read it as for walks or strolls in the park after dark. Either of which is a ridiculous suggestion because I think it's quite an accepted fact these days that walking and strolling around in the dark or after dark, certainly in the park after dark, is quite a dangerous and ridiculous suggestion. So quite obviously Sainsbury's has come under fire and been forced to apologise for this advert saying that they shouldn't have uh, put this up. This is just but one story so as I said I'm going to roll a few of them into this video because there's a few that pop up and I think Aside from being a slow news day, uh, these stories really do seem quite ridiculous on occasion. This one here picked up uh, in the sun, uh, talking about this chap, says that he's been stuck with a random stranger's car on his driveway for a year and it's a nightmare. Now, if anyone's in this situation where they've got this vehicle stuck on their driveway and they want to get rid of it, technically speaking, the local authority or the police should be doing something about it because it could be an abandoned vehicle. But whether they actually do get involved or not is an entirely other question. On the other hand, if you want to do something about this yourself because they won't be doing it, strictly speaking, you shouldn't be touching it because if you cause damage, you might be causing uh, criminal damage to it. And moreover, if you're accused of acting as though you're the owner of the vehicle, they might accuse you of conversion. However, one thing that really rides above all of that is if this is really on the driveway for a year, as this chap suggests, then it's causing a nuisance because it's ongoing and it's preventing him from being able to use his driveway. Now in that situation, I did do a video at one point, not that this is legal advice, it isn't, but I did do a video over on Black Belt Secrets, so please head over there, it's linked in the description below to subscribe there on what I might do in situations like this. Now in this particular case, I would be looking to get the vehicle removed. I would look up first of all who owns the vehicle, I would go to the DVLA and file the form to obtain the owner's details if there are registered keepers details on there so that I know who to sue for the amount of money that it's going to cost me to remove it. Then I would go to a pro firm to come and remove this vehicle properly and put it somewhere else because after all I would be abating a nuisance is the legal term which is preventing this nuisance from continuing and ongoing, which clearly it's an ongoing nuisance. So that's certainly what I would be doing in that situation. I would take certain precautions. I would try and find out who the owner is and all that sort of stuff. I would try the avenues with the local authority and with the police and all these kind of things beforehand. But if all of those fail, then ultimately I would be doing something about it myself. So moving back to the news articles, that's another one that I found was a little bit frustrating in this situation. Um, as you can see here, um, he was struggling to find out who it was because there's no number plate on it and so on. In other news, uh, this man uh, conveniently stopped nearby a speed van and said that he was just stopped for a break. Um, when questioned by the police officer and asked to move, he refused. Now, technically, he wasn't doing anything lo wrong, as long as he wasn't doing it deliberately to block the speed van, because technically that could be obstructing a constable in the execution of their duty. However, so long as he was, as the officer agreed, stopped on a genuine break and just stopped to have a respite at that area here, which looks like it is uh, precisely that, an area that you're supposed to stop and park, then technically he was doing nothing wrong. Although the officer, I'm sure, was quite frustrated by it, there was probably little he could do about it. In other news, this lady here said that she ordered a £500 iPad from Amazon and when she received it, it was only containing items worth less than £4. Now, this is again something that I've mentioned many, many times before. When you buy something online and it's of a certain value and you're worried about it arriving and it's not what you really ordered, then I would always suggest that you film yourself 
opening this package so that if it's not what you ordered, you can store the evidence. This is something I've said time and time again, you absolutely should be doing that. Now, I have a great solution for this coming up very, very soon. So I will put a link in the description below. Give me your email address, sign up for updates on that. I have a solution for you coming very soon and you can stay tuned for that. Uh, moving back to news items, the next one, um, actually, you might think a little bit ridiculous. So um, you may know that uh, Rolex do uh, a watch which is Oyster Perpetual. Now, there's a company um, making watches and clocks for children and also used Oyster in the name, Oyster and Pop. And now, um, accordingly, uh, they've been asked to stop doing that and rebrand by Rolex, uh, presumably because they don't want their brand tainted or anybody confused with the Rolex brand. However, this all comes into the law of passing off and trademark infringement. But really, a trademark is there to denote ownership and origin of a product. And one of the technicalities is, would you genuinely be confused as to the origin and the owner of these products? I think not, because I think it's quite clear that uh, the one on the left is being shown as a children's item to learn to tell the time, whereas Rolex, of course, one would think is not. So I personally don't think that there's any possible confusion between the two. Maybe you'll let me know what you think in the comments and whether you think this is just um, posturing by a uh, well-known well company trying to squeeze out another company out of the market for what they're doing um, innocently by the sounds of it. Um, personally, I don't think there should be a problem with it, but as I say, let me know what you think in the comments. Another one, little play on words here, a frosty reception as the council asks the residents to defrost the bin lids or risk not having the rubbish collected. Now, I actually think this is quite ridiculous because who is going to be out defrosting the bin lids every morning to ensure that they're collected. Now, I understand that it might be difficult for the refuse collection staff to get these collected when the bins are frozen, but I really can't imagine every single resident coming out and defrosting their lids so that their rubbish gets collected. I really can't see that happening, but again, let me know what you think in the comments. I thought that was quite a ridiculous request of the council to make, but that's just my view and uh, your views are welcome. Last but not least, uh, looking at here, this one was actually the frustrating one for me. Um, Jesmond Park Academy confiscated a 12 year old's winter coat in a row over school uniform. Uh, you can see the coat pictured here, presumably, it didn't match the colors or the design or whatever it is that the school has said that they must be wearing as part of their school uniform. However, with the desperately cold temperatures we've had just recently, I think, frankly, it's perfectly reasonable for that child to have been wearing that coat. But even if it wasn't, and even if the school stands their ground and says, you must wear school uniform, what they should not be doing in my view, as it suggests that they did do in this article, was to confiscate the coat and to take this coat off this poor child, leaving them to be freezing cold out on a winter's day. I think that is a step too far. I think that is potentially negligent because if they took the coat off the child uh, and left, particularly if they left them outside, that would be potentially negligent. I certainly hope that uh, the child was taken inside and not left outside in the cold. Um, but either way, um, I thought that was a little bit silly, but um, I don't disagree with uniform policy, but I think there are just ways of enforcing it. But let me know what you think in the comments, as I said. And in the meantime, if you have other uh, news stories that you would like me to comment on, such as these, please don't let me know. In the meantime, please remember to like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.